Welcome to tutorial 13 in the practical RF design tutorial series. In this tutorial, we will learn the design of a low noise amplifier from scratch. For this tutorial, we will design an ISM band LNA from 2.4 GHz to 2.5 GHz applications. Eight steps are involved in designing an LNA. Firstly, a device will be selected. Secondly, the LNA impedances need to be obtained. Thirdly, the impedance matching for the LNA should be done. The fourth step is the circuit design and simulation. As a fifth step, layout design should be done. Then layout simulation should be conducted followed by EM circuit core simulation. Finally, the simulation results will be analyzed. In this step, Measurement and correlation between the measurements are not included. Maybe in the future we can include measurement and correlation analysis as well. For this tutorial 13, step 2 until step 4 will be covered. The next step is to obtain the LNA input and output impedances. For PA, load pull simulation is necessary because it's a large signal circuit. However, we can leave it as parameter simulation for LNA because of the small signal characteristics. The template for LNA impedance extraction simulation can be found under Design Guide, Amplifier, as parameter simulations. The template name is as parameter, noise figure, gain, stability, circles and group delay versus frequency. As parameter data or the max model can be used for impedance simulation, I have used max model as shown in the schematic. Since I have already prepared our template for the simulation, I am going to cancel this. We built the biasing circuit which gives appropriate collector emitter voltage VCE and base current IB according to the biasing condition of interest. The optimization setup shown on the left is done to obtain unconditional stability by optimizing RF choke L3 and L4 and decoupling capacitor C10, C9, C11 and C12. Since these parameters are not adequate to provide unconditional stability to the LNA, we have used an additional component. A resistor R7 is used at the output match to trade gain for stability. With R7, we have obtained unconditional stability over a wide range of frequencies. The first plot shows maximum available gain, associated power gain and small signal gain plotted on the same graph. Associated power gain is the gain obtained by matching for noise figure. The following plot shows the minimum noise figure and the noise figure with ZO terminations plotted on the same graph. A good noise figure is required only for the frequency band of interest. So we can ignore this plot as we can refer to the noise figure later in this data display server. Here are the stability factors such as mu source, mu load and K factor. After adding resistor to the output, we are able to achieve unconditional stability up to 20 GHz. We have ensured the LNA also meets the gain specifications during the optimization. In this section, we can move the RF frequency selector marker to an appropriate frequency point and all the boxes below show the parameter for the frequency point. We have set the frequency point at the center of our band of interest, which is 2.45 GHz. The four boxes below the RF frequency selector shows the S parameter data. We have two options here. The first one is to do matching for gain. If we select this option, we need to use these impedances to do impedance matching for our LNA and we will get the highest gain of 22 dB. The second option is to do impedance matching for the noise figure. If we do impedance matching for our LNA using the impedances shown in the box below, we will achieve the best possible noise figure of 0.69 dB. The gain is also will be more than 20 dB. 
Since it will be able to meet both the noise figure and gain specification, we will choose to match for noise figure and impedances will follow as in the box below. The next step is impedance matching. After obtaining the impedances, we have to match the input and output impedance with 50 ohm. Impedance matching is done from PA input and output impedance to 50 ohms. The impedance we obtained from previous simulation is the complex conjugate PA impedance. As shown in figure here, ZI asterisk and ZO asterisk are complex conjugate impedances of the PA. Due to this, we need to reverse the sign of the imaginary part of these impedances to get the actual PA impedances. The next step is to do impedance matching. ADS has a brilliant impedance matching tool called the Smith Chart Utility. We will be using this tool to do impedance matching. I have done the impedance matching before and saved it. I will open the saved data here. Let's delete all the components so I can demonstrate how it's done. The first step is to make sure the frequency is set to the center of our band of interest and the characteristic impedance is set to 50 ohms. The next step is to insert the Q circle value. For our frequency band of interest, the calculated Q circle value is 8. I am currently doing the impedance matching. It's convenient to do impedance matching using Smith Chart Utility. The LNA input matching is done in 2 minutes. Next, we have to match the LNA output impedance to 50 ohms. I will modify the ZL or load impedance to the LNA output impedance. Then I will lock it so it won't change while I am doing the impedance matching. As we have done before, impedance matching can be done in less than 2 minutes. We have done impedance matching for our LNA input and output impedances. The next step is circuit simulation. Before we simulate, we need to build the circuit. This is our LNA circuit. The matching component values obtained from step 3 will be used in this schematic here. On top of that, the LNA circuit also contains the biasing circuit. The biasing circuit provides required collector emitter voltage VCE and base emitter current IBE. We also have decoupling capacitors to filter out noise in the DC part. RF chokes will block the RF from entering the DC part. I have incorporated DC blocking capacitor in the input and output matching components to block the DC from entering the RF part. Let's move on to our circuit simulation results. I have created this data display server template. You can create a custom template like this and copy and paste it easily to recreate them which saves a lot of time. The S-parameter performance of the circuit simulation is shown in this figure. The LNA meets all the specification including gain, isolation, input and output return loss. The gain is more than 20 dB which is excellent. The isolation is minus 29 dB. The input return loss is less than minus 18 dB and the output return loss is less than minus 14.9 dB. This graph shows noise figure and DC simulation. The excellent noise figure of 0.92 dB to 0.95 dB was obtained across 2.4 
gigahertz to 2.5 gigahertz frequency range. The collector current IC of 0.017 milliamps is obtained which is also the total current draw of the LNA. The base current IB is very small and negligible but ADS allows you to plot this as well. The last results are stability analysis results. Through the WS probe, we can plot the real part of driving point admittance and bilateral true return ratio loop gain. We also plotted mu source and mu load. The mu source and mu load more than one across 1 kHz to 20 GHz of frequency range shows the LNA is unconditionally stable. Moreover, the real part of driving point admittance is more than zero and the bilateral true return ratio loop gain is less than zero validates the mentioned conclusion. Thank you for watching this tutorial. I will see you in my next video with another interesting problem. For inquiries, please email pragash at innovave.co or visit www.innovave.co.